Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins. I'm John Rice. Uh, this week has brought the sudden cancellation, or at least temporary hiatuses of two separate franchises, with both Mass Effect and Hitman being put on ice by their respective parent companies. However, some new rumors are surfacing that all isn't lost for the future endeavors of Agent 47, and that season two could well be on its way. Well, so, how's that for an elusive target? <laughs> okay, uh, but first- Is that like some... a Hitman reference? Yes, it is. That's good. Uh, but first, some background in what went down this week, for those who aren't aware. Yesterday, Square Enix released a statement in conjunction with its financial briefing, informing investors of over $40 million in losses for the fiscal year, ending in March 2017, uh, which is always a bad thing this that you have to tell briefing. investors. Yeah. Um, as part of those losses, they are now going to be doing some internal shuffling, which unfortunately includes putting Hitman developer IO Interactive up for sale. Uh, in the statement, Square Enix said the company has regrettably decided to withdraw from the business of IO Interactive, a wholly owned subsidiary and a Danish corporation, as of March 31st, 2017. They went on to say, as a result of this, the company started discussions with potential new investors and is currently in negotiations to secure this investment. Whilst there can be no guarantees that the negotiations will be concluded successfully, they are being explored since this is in the best interest of our shareholders, the studio, and the industry as a whole. Cue the waterworks from series fans, especially after the positive reception of the latest entry, which took the game into an episodic direction, with new content coming on a regular schedule. I played it, it was awesome. You can hear the Gavin Free tears from here. I know. Uh, but Hope is still alive, actually, according to the latest rumors. This new development comes from German gaming website GameStar, citing what they claim are extremely reliable sources close to the situation. GameStar writes, we've learned that the rights to Hitman actually stay with IO Interactive and not at Square. Yeah, which is good news for fans because the the original worry was that Square Enix would be the ones left with the rights and they might be retiring it altogether. Typically rights to a franchise stick with the publisher rather than developer when things like this go down. Right, depends on how everything was negotiated. In this yeah. case, IO Interactive may have lucked out. Mm -hmm. uh, what's more, GameStar is also claiming that Hitman Season 2 is alive and well. In fact, IO Interactive is already deep into development on the next installment of the series with about half of the project completed so far. It's good news. Of course, there's no telling if this rumor is true, but the idea that the next game is already deep into development isn't that far-fetched. Uh, season 1 of Hitman wrapped up back in October of last year, so it stands to reason the studio was already gearing up for Season 2 well before that. So now, the big question about Hitman's future relies on whether or not Square Enix is able to find a buyer for IO Interactive, and a lot of that is going to depend on how much Square Enix wants for the studio and how attractive IO Interactive is to potential investors. Maybe they're going for $40 million. <laughs> Just Who knows? Out, come out even. Um, that all comes down to sales of Hitman. We don't know how much the newest game sold in total, but estimates of the physical version of the complete season, which didn't release until January, are only at about half a million total. I kind of would have expected it to be higher, I guess. I mean, it is true that the release model for Hitman confused a lot of people. Yeah. Maybe that cut into it. I was very confused when I bought it and then I played it and I didn't know it was episodic. It's like, is it over? Like, I like finished right, is it. Is that it? Okay. And then realized it was going to come out more. Meanwhile, it moved more than 600,000 copies on Steam, so that's just over a million in sales without including the bulk of gamers who were probably buying it digitally as it came out on Xbox Live and PSN. Okay, so overall somewhere between one and two million copies, maybe possibly more, yeah. um, but that's not exactly amazing territory for AAA development. It's There are a lot of games that would love to break the million mark flat, but if you're a AAA game, the stand Thirds tend to be a little bit higher than that. I remember, uh, in fact, it was Square Enix. I think, was it Square Enix? Or, no, or Crystal Dynamics. So I think it was Square saying that they, the new Tomb Raider was a disappointment for them after it sold like four million units in the first three weeks. Like that wasn't enough. Yeah. Um, but it may be the one to two million territory is enticing enough for someone else to come in and grab them on the cheap. Usually when these things happen, a buyer is eventually found, especially when these kinds of IPs are involved. That's how the recently revealed uh, Darksiders 3 survived the bankruptcy of its former masters at THQ. THQ's properties were eventually scooped up by THQ Nordic, who then took ownership of the series. THQ Nordic, to be clear, didn't used to be THQ. It's not the old THQ. It's like the, um, who, it was Infogrames who bought Atari and then were like, we're Atari now. Um, it's a separate company. Yeah. It sounds confusing. It wasn't just a bunch of Vikings that were that bought THQ. Although that would have been real sweet. Yeah. Uh, also, doesn't always go that way either. Uh, so Microsoft, when they decided to shut down Lionhead Studios last year, they got a bunch of offers for the Fable IP, which they then refused to sell, thus killing any potential deals or sequels or anything like that. So basically, probably no one offered them enough, or they've got some crazy plans for it that uh, we just don't know about. Yeah. Maybe, possibly. 
Maybe a Fable reboot. Who knows? As for where IO Interactive and Hitman could end up, that's anybody's guess. While we could see one of the big console makers trying to pick up the Hitman IP as a platform exclusive, it's really going to go to the highest bidder, and that could be just about any publisher out there. Yeah, unfortunately for Square Enix, this is not the first beloved franchise to get the boot over lackluster sales. Uh, most recently, the company also put the Doc Martens to Deus Ex. Uh, back in January, word broke that Square decided to put Deus Ex on hold in favor of their Marvel projects that they're working on. Uh, they just recently signed that big deal with Marvel over upcoming Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy games that are not Telltale. Uh, yeah, it seems in the future, per their earnings report, their focus is going to be on one to two blockbusters per year, uh, remasters of old favorites, a renewed effort at supporting multi multiple platforms, and a push for mobile. Uh, we'll see if that works out for them, but in the meantime, stop killing off these franchises, guys, please. Consider it. Or, yeah. Or remember the Kingdom Hearts 3 part. Uh, what do you guys think of Hitman possibly surviving and season two being on its way? Who really who should purchase IO Interactive and give it new life? Let us know in the comments. For future updates on all the cancellations in the industry, please don't let there be any more anytime soon. That's we like nice these prayer, games. But there will be. Yeah, remember to like this video though. And if you're new around here, subscribe to the no. That way we don't get canceled. Yay! <laughs> it's not a dark way to end a news read at all. Man, why you gotta call him out of Danish? That was a weird, yeah, it's like wholly owned Danish corporation. You know, the, the Danes. For future updates on all the glitches in the thing right now. On the Matrix. What happened to the prompter for future? It's doing that a bunch, I don't know.